Hello and welcome to Sat TV Week, the news programme for the global satellite industry. In this week's programme, Tricia has launched news and Eleanor looks at an award for Beam Communications. But first, SES has announced a strategic partnership with Viking Satcom for the development and deployment of commercial satellite antenna systems to enable the expansion of its centre arc cable neighbourhood. Cable operators are increasingly accessing the trio of SES Centre Arc satellites, AMC 18, AMC 1, and SES 1, to bolster their lineups with popular regional and national programming. SES has initiated a fully funded antenna program aimed at making it easy for cable systems to receive content from the Centre Arc birds, complementing SES two highly acclaimed Western Arc satellites. AMC 10 and AMC 11, which have long been home to premium cable dial. As part of SES's new Centre Arc Antenna programme, qualified cable operators will receive free of charge a C-band antenna system from supplier Viking Satcom, capable of receiving all existing and future SES-delivered cable programming on the Centre Arc cable neighbourhood. With full visibility of SES well-positioned cable satellites, Cable operators will experience higher levels of network resiliency and support through SES's inter-satellite backup and restoration services. Comtech EF Data has been awarded a $6.5 million buying agreement from Harris Corporation. Under the agreement, Harris will purchase Comtech EF Data ground equipment to support the satellite network upgrade of the Federal Aviation Administration's Alaskan Satellite Telecommunications Infrastructure Program. The not to exceed $6.5 million agreement encompasses a range of Comtech EF Data ground equipment, including the CDM625 advanced satellite modem with double torque carrier in carrier, redundancy switches and RF products for indoor and outdoor environments. Aon, the apostolic oneness network, the global Christian TV network, has selected Satlink to distribute its premium channel internationally. Aon chose Satlink due to the outstanding market penetration achieved by Satlink's global satellite platforms in every region. The new arrangement will extend Aon's audience reach in Europe, Asia, Africa and the Americas over Satlink's prime international satellite network. Now here's Tricia with the launch news. NASA's Landsat Data Continuity Mission roared into space on Monday aboard an Atlas V rocket from Vandenberg Air Force Base in California. The LDCM spacecraft separated from the rocket 79 minutes after launch and the first signal was received three minutes later at a ground station in Norway. The solar arrays deployed 86 minutes after launch and the spacecraft is generating power for them. LDCM is on a course to reach its operational sun-synchronous polar orbit 438 miles above Earth within two months. LDCM will go through a checkout phase for the next three months. Afterwards, operational control will be transferred to NASA's mission partner, the Department of the Interior's U.S. Geological Survey, and the satellite will be renamed Landsat 8. Data will be archived and distributed free over the internet from the Earth Resources and Science Centre in Sioux Falls. The 1800th flight of a Soyuz launch vehicle was performed on Monday the 11th of February 2013 from the Baikonur Cosmodrome in Kazakhstan. Arin Spass and its Russian partners report that the Progress cargo spacecraft was accurately placed on the target orbit for another mission to the International Space Station. This was the second Soyuz family mission in 2013. 
MIASAT Satellite Systems has announced the successful launch of the ASA Space One Africa Sat 1A satellite. The satellite was launched on an Ariane 5 ECA launch vehicle from the European spaceport in Kourou, French Guiana. The ASA Space One Africa Sat 1A satellite was developed as a result of collaboration between MIASAT and ASA Cosmos Joint Stock Company, a company set up by the Ministry of Communications and Information Technologies of the Government of the Republic of Azerbaijan. Now here is Eleanor with news of an award for Beam Communications for Inmarsat Marine Terminals. Beam Communications has entered into an agreement with Beijing Marine Communications and Navigation Company for the supply of an initial one million US dollars of Beam Inmarsat Marine Terminals. This initial order follows a successful trial and now acceptance of the Beam Terminals. After MCN committed in July 2012 to undertake a trial, deploying 200 beam Oceana 400 and Oceana 800 marine satellite communications terminals on the fishing vessels in China, using the Inmarsat fleet phone service. At the time, for commercial and competitive reasons, the customer's details could not be disclosed. The terminals were specifically designed and manufactured by Beam to support the voice, data and tracking communications that take place over the Inmarsat satellite network via its fleet phone maritime service. Thanks for watching. Thank you.